Uh, hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming uh, to our talk. Uh, now we're going uh, to talk about new methods for exploiting uh, ORM injections vulnerabilities in Java applications. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is uh, Mikhail. I'm a security researcher and bug hunter from Russia. Uh, currently, I work for Ingram Micro uh, Cloud as application security engineer. Uh, my daily duty is to perform uh, penetration testing of software, uh, service automation software we develop at Ingram Micro Cloud. And my name is Sergey. I work for Kaspersky Lab as head of security operations center. And this research is not connected to my work. Uh, this is rather a hobby. Another my hobby is music. I present at Twitter and have personal blog where I discuss my thoughts about information security and even psychology, psychology and all that stuff that directly or indirectly connected to uh, IT security. But unfortunately, all this stuff in Russian. But thanks, Google, it's not a problem now. OK. Uh, uh, here you can see the uh, agenda of our talk. It consists of four main parts. Uh, it has an intro introduction part. We will sh shortly talk about uh, what uh, ORM is. Uh, the next part is about ORM uh, injection uh, vulnerabilities basics. Uh, the uh, majority of slides are devoted uh, two exploitation techniques we uh, uncovered in uh, different uh, ORM libraries. And in, in the last part of our talk, we uh, will summarize our techniques and present them in the form of uh, tables uh, for your convenience. I want to say that uh, last year on uh, Zero Nights conference in Russia, we already presented some exploitation techniques for uh, Hibernate ORM uh, library. Uh, and in uh, this talk, we uh, will present new methods for uh, uh, new techniques for exploiting uh, ORM injections in Hibernate. And also, we'll uh, cover other uh, ORM libraries used in Java. Uh, let's talk about ORM in uh, general. Uh, ORM uh, stands for Object uh, Relational Mapping. It's a programming uh, technique for, convert, uh, for converting data between uh, relational uh, databases and uh, <coughs> object-oriented uh, uh, programming languages. On this picture, you can see uh, ORM uh, is the uh, question box in the middle between uh, database management system and Java application. Uh, ORM uh, <coughs> Uh, communicates with uh, database management system, uh, fetches uh, data from tables, and uh, aut aut automatically <coughs> converts uh, this data into Java objects. Uh, here on the slide, you can see some of the uh, advantages for using ORM in your Java application. Of course, you can use uh, plain JDBC and implement everything uh, by yourself on application side. And in some cases, it makes sense when you need uh, specific uh, functionality or uh, performance is very critical to your application. Uh, but uh, for the majority of uh, cases, uh, <coughs> using uh, ORM uh, library in your application gives more benefits than <coughs> implementing everything uh, from scratch uh, uh, via plain uh, GDBC. OK, uh, what is uh, GPA? GPA stands for Java Persistence API. Uh, it uh, st standardized API, uh, uh, which is exposed by uh, ORM uh, library. Uh, so uh, Java application uh, communicates with ORM through this API. Uh, there are uh, three main versions of GPA, and most ORM libraries support uh, GPA 2.0. Uh, there are uh, a lot of ORM libraries in uh, Java. On the slide, you can see uh, uh, <coughs> four libraries that are used mostly in practice. Uh, and in brackets, you can see uh, G2E application servers that are shipped with a particular ORM library. Uh, so in our research, we focused on these four libraries 
uh, but I'm pretty confident that uh, based on techniques we have discovered you can find uh, similar exploitation techniques for other ORM libraries. Uh, ORM uh, <coughs> libraries utilize uh, special uh, uh, query language with, uh, which is called uh, Java Persistence uh, Query Language. It is used for, uh, for mapping uh, <coughs> uh, data between uh, database tables and uh, Java objects. And for historical reasons, uh, Hibernate ORM uses different language, uh, which is called uh, Hibernate uh, Query Language. And uh, HQL uh, is a superset for uh, GPQL. And since uh, GPA 2.0, uh, there is a criteria API. Um, uh, this is a, a set of interfaces and uh, classes uh, to construct query uh, programmatically. So in your Java application, you can, uh, uh, you uh, have two uh, alternatives. You can use uh, a string uh, GPQL queries, or you can construct queries uh, programmatically uh, via a criteria API. And uh, criteria queries are checked at uh, compile time. Uh, so mm, uh, it is, uh, uh, so um, the code uh, becomes more safer because uh, developer, uh, it's harder for the developer to introduce a security bug. Uh, I want to explain briefly what ORM injection vulnerability is and what limitations are exist for its exploitation. Uh, we can also name ORM injections, uh, GPQL injections or uh, HQL injections when we talk about uh, Hibernate ORM. And uh, uh, we can say that uh, ORM injections are similar to uh, classic uh, SQL injections in how they uh, looks like in the source code of the application. Uh, here on the slide you can see an uh, uh, example of function that is vulnerable to uh, ORM injection. Uh, so uh, GPQL query is constructed by string uh, concatenation. There is a static part and uh, it uh, uh, concatenates with uh, uh, name uh, parameter that is controlled uh, uh, from outside of the function. Uh, then this query is used to uh, get uh, data from database and construct a list of Java object of class post. I want to emphasize that SQL injection and uh, GPQL injection are similar in how they are introduced in the source code, but from uh, exploitation perspective they are completely different. Uh, here on the slide you can see uh, a <coughs> SQL injection uh, a scenario. Uh, attacker can uh, inject uh, custom SQL statements uh, through uh, uh, injection vulnerability in a Java application and obtain uh, data from database. So in this uh, scenario he can communicate with uh, database uh, directly through uh, injection. Uh, for <coughs> ORM injection uh, scenario, there is ORM uh, library in the middle between uh, Java application and database management system. Attacker can inject uh, GPQL or HQL queries and uh, to obtain uh, Java objects from ORM library. In this uh, scenario, he uh, <coughs> cannot uh, communicate with uh, database management system uh, directly. And ORM is the main obstacle for the attacker he has to bypass. Uh, unequipped attacker will uh, likely feel frustration trying to exploit uh, ORM ejection. And there are three main reasons for that. Uh, GPQL or HQL uh, <coughs> have a weird and limited uh, uh, syntax. So not all uh, SQL statements will work. Uh, for example, uh, GPQL does not support unions. Uh, a database, uh, so um, from uh, GPQL uh, query, you can access uh, arbitrary tables. 
you can access uh, tables in database that are uh, mapped uh, directly to entity uh, classes. Uh, if you will try to access tables that uh, is not uh, mapped, you will get exception from ORM. And uh, the third reason is uh, that uh, your favorite tools for SQL injection exploitation will not work with ORM injection. <coughs> okay, uh, Java developers might argue that um, in practice nobody uh, writes uh, GPQL queries by uh, using uh, string uh, concatenation. And uh, vulnerability is more artificial and uh, theoretical than practical. But I want, you, uh, but I want to convince you that uh, it isn't true. Uh, so uh, here you can see the short list of vulnerabilities for the last year uh, I'm aware of. Uh, <clears throat> first uh, example is HQL injection I uh, have found by myself. Uh, uh, internally, uh, when uh, I performed a security assessment of our products. Uh, next example is uh, HQL injection in uh, Open Bravo ERP system. And uh, the third example is uh, HQL in <coughs> injection in a uh, novel service desk software. Uh, for studying ORM injections, we uh, developed a uh, vulnerable Java application which is available on GitHub. You can uh, download and uh, play with it. Uh, before <coughs> discussing uh, exploitation techniques, I want to uh, show how, in general, uh, uh, ORM library uh, works. Uh, there are three main steps or phases. Uh, on the first step, uh, ORM library uh, parse, uh, parses uh, GPQL or HQL query and builds uh, GPQL or HQL uh, abstract syntax tree. Uh, then on the next step, it translates uh, GPQL AST into SQL AST. And finally, uh, it uh, <coughs> builds SQL query from uh, SQL AST. Uh, now I want to give uh, the turn to my colleague, uh, Sergei Huel. Uh, he will start to talk about exploitation techniques. Uh, okay, let's start with Eclipse Link or um, Eclipse Link is a mapping and persistence framework that uh, is under stewardship of Eclipse Foundation. Uh, it is designed for use in Java environment, including uh, Java Platform Standard Edition, Java Platform Enterprise Edition. Uh, Sorry. Diving into the documentation, we we found that uh, this ORM has a magic function, and guess now how, how it's called? It's called function. Um, this function, mm, it's worth noting that this function exists because of reported bug. Uh, developers complained that they need a functionality to uh, call arbitrary database function, and now this function is present. And the, the thing is that it, is, it works rather silly. It takes first its argument as function name, database function name, and all other arguments put in, into round brackets to form database function call. On slide you can see how it works, and exploitation is rather silly. Uh, this technique works for any database management system, and this is example for PostgreSQL, and green asterisk uh, shows custom injection point. And now let's see a small video how exploitation looks like. Okay, uh, we have our vulnerable application, HQL Playground, it returns JSON when working correctly. Okay, let's put our uh, magic function into URL and see what will happen. Okay, it's internal server error. Let's see what uh, expression cause this error. You see, uh, this seems to be a uh, function call because we have opened and closed uh, around brackets after this expression. 
let's add something to URL to form a valid uh, database function call. Let it be length, and of course we pass uh, valid argument to length. It's 3a, and the length of 3a is 3. So now it's work, working well. And you can form uh, true and false expression to exploit uh, blind SQL injection. So, okay, that's all. Uh, we have to copy this and put into our uh, SQL map. Specify database management system, technique is blind, and uh, bflag means uh, retrieve banner. Uh, we need to specify custom injection point. It's very the, the same place where we changed one to two to form uh, true and false uh, output. So actually, that's it. Now we, sh we should receive banner. This is not the first time I see this video, so I'm sure <laughs> ben, <laughs> banner will come. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, SQL map said that it, it, it was found uh, asterisk and it, uh, parameter is vulnerable and we can see banner. So, what happened? Uh, we have vulnerable application and object mapped to database, but because of vulnerability, we have access to database banner. Um, but banner is not interesting. And let's try to retrieve something more convenient. For example, let's try to enumerate databases and see what will happen. Actually, it works. So it's information schema, PG catalog, public. The most interesting for us is public because all others in default Postgres uh, databases. Let's enumerate tables from database public. Again, the same questions. Asterisk, yes. Uh, so we have post and users tables. Let's dump users table because it seems to be interesting. Specify capital T flag users table and flag dump to dump it. Okay, something happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, you will already see this. But believe me, <laughs> This works. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the second our patient is top link ORM, and it's very similar to Eclipse link, and it has a function with another name, but with the same functionality. And here, the, here you can see ex abstract from documentation that explain why we have SQL function. Uh, actually, uh, documentation for this function is very useful. If you uh, want to figure out how to exploit this very vulnerability, just look into documentation and vulnerable example right in the documentation. So this is example of true. Uh, this is example of false. And exploitation is completely the same. This technique works for every database management system, for any database management system because it's a uh, ORM feature. Okay, OpenGPA. OpenGPA is uh, open source implementation of uh, GPA distributed under Apache license. Uh, in this ORM we found a number of vulnerabilities with quotes. The first one, uh, we called run single quotes processing and we called our method in the same way. Uh, the problem here is that uh, this ORM substitutes all sequences of two single quotes by one single quote. 
and uh, this strange behavior uh, can allow to hide select statement within string. How exploitation looks like. Uh, you can see this, uh, this line, and uh, we have a uh, string with uh, single quotes that correctly escaped. But uh, because of this functionality with wrong single quotes processing, all sequences of two single quotes will be substituted by one single quote. And uh, the meaning of this expression will, uh, will be changed completely. On slide, you can see how to form true expression and false expression for blind SQL injection. Exploitation looks like this. And this technique uh, works for every database management system. And on slide, example is for Postgres. Uh, another interesting feature uh, about Apache Open GPA is that uh, it has vulnerability that we called quotes indifference. Uh, the problem here that uh, it allows to uh, limit uh, strings uh, with uh, different kind of quotes. So for example, uh, you see on slide uh, string that starts with uh, double quotes and adds with single quotes, and this is correct string definition. And of course, it ca this can be explode, exploited. And exploit looks like this. Uh, ORM sees in this line uh, string uh, in uh, double quotes with single quotes inside it. But uh, because of this feature of quotes indifference, uh, database management system finally gets uh, comparison A and A and select statement compared with uh, eight. Uh, so the meaning of this uh, expression changed completely. Exploitation looks like this. And again, this technique works for every database management system. And here, example for PostgreSQL, green asterisk is custom injection point for SQL map. Hibernate. Hibernate is the most interesting o ORM. Uh, that's because we didn't manage to find universal exploitation technique. Uh, but we uncovered five different techniques for uh, different databases, database management systems. Okay. Uh, we named the first technique uh, single quote escaping. Uh, the technique works for MySQL uh, database management system only. Uh, it works because uh, MySQL and Hibernate uh, process code escaping differently. Uh, so we can see that in MySQL to escape single quote, you must use slash a symbol before the single quote. Uh, but in uh, Hibernate, you must double single quote to escape it. Uh, we can use uh, slash symbol with two uh, subsequent uh, single quotes characters to uh, uh, bypass uh, hibernate and eject uh, arbitrary uh, SQL uh, query. Uh, so you can see that um, uh, hibernate uh, will uh, treat uh, slash with two single quotes as a slash with uh, escape single quote. Uh, but MySQL uh, will treat this as uh, uh, escaped quote and uh, single quote that uh, terminate the string. And uh, the part of the string that comes after slash with uh, two single quotes is treated as additional uh, condition by MySQL. If we inject following uh, expression into vulnerable uh, parameter, we will get the following HQL query, uh, which is processed by Hibernate. And Hibernate uh, process uh, injected expression as string. Uh, but when my uh, SQL uh, gets uh, SQL query uh, via JDBC after HQL query uh, uh, was processed, uh, it will obtain um, a mutated SQL query with additional uh, uh, select uh, subquery. 
uh, to exploit HQL injection uh, when uh, MySQL database management system is used, you can use the following uh, SQL map command line. Uh, another interesting technique uh, is uh, we called it uh, dollar quoted strings method uh, was presented for us by PostgreSQL and H2. It's worth noting that uh, these two database management systems allows uh, dollar quoted uh, strings constants. So uh, on slide you can see string dollar dollar AAA quote BBB dollar dollar. It's uh, correct string definition for these uh, very databases. On the other hand, uh, Hibernate ORM allows identifiers starting with dollar. And here you can see fragment from uh, Hibernate grammar specification. Composing all these facts together, we can make a hack. <laughs> Um, suppose this string. Uh, HQL understands it as comparison with identifier dollar dollar with string that started with double dollar. But SQL understands the same line differently. It understands uh, string quoted with double dollar signs compared to concat uh, function. And uh, the exploitation of uh, this idea looks like this. Uh, again, this technique uh, works only for PostgreSQL or H2, who allows, uh, uh, database which allows uh, double dollar quoted strings. And green asterisk, as usual, our custom injection point. Third method, we name, uh, named it uh, magic functions method. And it works against uh, database management systems uh, that uh, have magic, uh, magic functions that we can use in SQL expression. And there are uh, these um, magic functions uh, evaluates SQL query from string uh, parameter uh, passed to this uh, magic function. And uh, there are magic functions for PostgreSQL and Oracle. And the reason why this technique works uh, is because Hibernate allow, allows to specify arbitrary function names in uh, HQL expressions. Uh, PostgreSQL has a nice built-in function query to XML. It evaluates uh, SQL query uh, from a string parameter and returns an XML object. Uh, that XML object uh, represents uh, query execution uh, results. Uh, but we cannot use query to XML uh, directly in HQL query. Uh, that is why we need to surround it with XPath and array upper uh, function uh, <coughs> uh, call, uh, calls additionally. So if we use following uh, expression uh, shown on the bottom of the slide in HQL query, we can info whether uh, <coughs> SQL query marked yellow uh, returns zero or more rows. Uh, so we, uh, if we inject intervulnerable parameter following uh, expression, uh, you can see that uh, uh, <coughs> PostgreSQL uh, will uh, get SQL query with query to XML function call. Uh, you can exploit uh, our uh, HQL injection uh, when uh, PostgreSQL uh, is used uh, using uh, following uh, uh, SQL map command line. In my YouTube channel, you can find the video about how this exploitation method works. Uh, for Oracle, there is uh, get XML uh, ma magic functions. If uh, you inject following expression uh, into, uh, mm, uh, into uh, HQL uh, with NVL to char and get XML uh, functions, you can info whether uh, select query that is marked yellow returns zero or more rows. Uh, to exploit uh, HQL injection with Oracle uh, database management system, you can use following uh, command line. 
the next method uh, has name Unicode. Uh, it turns out that uh, some uh, database management systems um, allows to uh, use Unicode delimiters uh, like uh, this Unicode symbol 0A0 as uh, token delimiters in a SQL query. Uh, so we found that Microsoft uh, SQL Server and H2 databases allows, allow uh, Unicode delimiters. Uh, so in uh, SQL Server, uh, these two queries are uh, works uh, the same. Uh, in the first query, you can see that we use um, a Unicode delimiter with code point 00A0. Uh, the, there are many uh, Unicode symbols in, uh, that works for Microsoft SQL Server as token delimiters. Uh, but for exploitation, uh, these two works, uh, these two symbols uh, work. Uh, this is a no break space and ideographic space. Uh, let's see why does this method work. Uh, on the slide, you can see the snippet from HQL Grammar. Uh, and rule that is marked uh, red on the slide uh, tells us that um, uh, Hibernate allows uh, uh, to use Unicode symbols in identifiers. Uh, so if we inject following construction into vulnerable uh, parameter, we will get the following uh, HQL query. And uh, percent uh, C2% uh, A0 is uh, URL encoded and UTF-8 encoded uh, um, no break space Unicode symbol. Uh, here is a part of uh, HQL AST. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here is the HQL AST for the part of HQL uh, query that uh, contains uh, Unicode symbols. Uh, symbols. So this uh, part is marked yellow on the bottom of the slide. We can see uh, in uh, AST um, uh, a no, a node with a uh, len uh, function call, then uh, a node with uh, nested function call, which has a name that consists of one Unicode symbol with code point zero zero a 0 And uh, this nested function ha uh, has argument uh, I, I identify a node. In this identifier, we hide a SQL query uh, by using uh, Unicode delimiters. Uh, that is uh, how we uh, bypass uh, Hibernate with Microsoft SQL Server. Unfortunately, we cannot use uh, SQL uh, map to exploit uh, or uh, HQL injection uh, using uh, this method. Uh, so, first time we wrote a simple uh, Perl script for exploitation, but it uh, has one drawback. It works against our test application. Uh, so, if you want to use it, you must uh, tune it. Um, it is available on GitHub, and you can watch uh, the video how it works. But we did not give up and uh, decided to tune a uh, SQL uh, map. Uh, we wrote uh, hibernate.py tempo script and modified uh, queries.xml file. You can find uh, these two files on GitHub. Uh, to extract uh, something from a uh, database using uh, Unicode method, we use queries that are similar uh, to these queries. Uh, so here we extract uh, first uh, eight rows. Uh, of column uh, pass uh, W from table users. And these queries have special form because we must uh, convince uh, Hibernate that we are performing a function call. Inside this function call, we perform nested function uh, call with some arguments. Uh, that is why we cannot use uh, equal or not equal operators. We use like and not like instead. Um, let's see how to exploit HQL injection with Unicode method and SQL uh, map. Uh, first, you need to copy uh, hibernate.py uh, and queries.xml files and place uh, them into SQL map home directory. 
uh, then you need to find uh, injection uh, using the first command line. And uh, finally, you exploit uh, uh, HQL injection using a uh, second command line. And let's see the video, how it works. Okay, as usual, I show a video how exploitation looks like. Can you see something? Okay, this is our vulnerable application. Let's try our long URL with Unicode. And here is a true change in where condition we can get false. Okay, that's it. We need to copy this. Ah, first of all, we need to copy hibernate.py into a uh, temp folder in SQL map home. Sorry for Russian Windows. Uh, we need slightly different queries, so we wrote our queries.xml and we need to put it into XML folder, but we recommend you to preserve original one. This, is, this means copy. Um, so we are prepared now. On first step, let SQL map to find an injection. This is the command. Okay, on the second step, we need to specify our temper script. You see flag temper, hibernate, right near the, this bullet with. <laughs> and you can see banner, as usual. But banner, as usual, is not interesting. Let's try to enumerate database, uh, database host name. It's Slava dash PC SQL Express. Slava, it's Russian name, by the way. It's uh, my father-in-law computer. Um, now we already uh, enumerate in uh, databases, and it's mastered MDB model MSDB HQLI. The most interesting for us is HQLI because all others are default database for SQL Server. Okay, let's enumerate tables from HQLI database. It's post, users. Uh, as usual, the most interesting for us is table users. Let's enumerate columns from users table. And users table has username, column, and password. Unfortunately, our method allows to dump uh, data from table only field by field. But uh, to our mind, this is better than to use custom Perl script because SQL map usage gives us better flexibility. To specify a row num that we want to dump, we need to set environment variable for our temper script. Set row num to one. This, uh, and again, we specify um, table name, column name, database, technique is blind. Oh, where are we? Okay. And okay, username is admin. Um, to get password, you need to set a uh, capital C flag to password and you get something very interesting. Okay, to get another string, uh, to get another row from database, you need to flush session before. So this is the command that flush session. And after that, you need to set environment variable to two to dump another row. Again, specify username. So gg do and 
capital C password, dumps password. Okay, and that's it. Actually, we can go to our database management system and find the slout.pc, hqli database that has user stable and uh, it has two rows, which is exactly the same data. Okay. The last method we want to present is called uh, Java Constants method. Uh, this method works for uh, the most uh, database management systems except MySQL. Uh, but it heavily depends on uh, classes that are on the class pairs of uh, the application we uh, are attacking. Uh, the uh, reason why this method works is because Hibernate resolves um, uh, uh, resolves uh, <coughs> uh, fields of uh, public static uh, classes uh, through uh, dot delimited identifier. Uh, so we can uh, specify, uh, for example, uh, Java dot lang dot character dot size in our HQL query and Hibernate will replace it to uh, 16. If we are referencing um, uh, public static uh, fields of type string or char, uh, Hibernate will additionally uh, surround them uh, with uh, two uh, uh, single quotes. Uh, so uh, java.lang.character.minValue will be uh, replaced with uh, just two single quotes. Uh, so to use this method, we need uh, uh, classes on uh, class paths that uh, have uh, public static fields of type char or string that uh, have a uh, single quote. Uh, so, um, uh, for example, uh, a public uh, static uh, uh, field uh, of type string that contains one single quote is suitable uh, uh, part of HQL query that ends with a uh, single quote is also suitable for exploitation. Or, or char, uh, char fields are also suitable. On the slide you can see uh, five different representations of single quote for char type. Or you, uh, you can use uh, interface class with uh, static fields. So uh, public is not mandatory because uh, in interface class uh, all uh, fields by default are, uh, are public. We search through uh, uh, Java libraries to find suitable uh, fields for exploitation. And we found uh, two very popular libraries. This is, they are ICU4j and logback. Uh, these libraries have uh, classes uh, with public static uh, fields uh, that are suitable for exploitation uh, with names single quote and single quote char. And uh, as I said, uh, th this is two uh, very popular libraries and um, it uh, will probably likely that uh, they uh, will encounter in uh, the class pass uh, class pass of the application you uh, are uh, taking. Uh, now let's see uh, how this method works in uh, details. So we inject following expression into vulnerable uh, parameter. In uh, this expression, we uh, multiply uh, Java constant c underscore quote underscore one. Uh, to result of a uh, function call with name uh, x. And this function uh, has a string parameter. So uh, on the bottom of the slide, uh, there, uh, there is a HQL query that is processed by Hibernate. Uh, 
here you can see uh, HQL uh, AST uh, for the part of HQL query that is marked yellow on the bottom on the slide and contains uh, Java constant. Uh, here we can uh, see um, uh, Java constant node uh, in the uh, AST marked uh, green. And also we see um, uh, string node uh, that is uh, marked uh, red. After Hibernate uh, parses HQL query, uh, it builds uh, HQL AST and then translates this AST into SQL AST. Uh, here we can see uh, SQL AST for the uh, SQL, uh, HQL query. So we can see that nodes uh, Java constant node and uh, string node uh, nodes are, are translated unchanged uh, into SQL AST. And we see that uh, Java constant is not yet resolved. And on the fi final step, uh, HQL translates uh, uh, SQL AST into SQL query. And on uh, that step, uh, <coughs> Java constant uh, is replaced with uh, uh, three single quotes. And we see that um, SQL subquery that was concealed uh, inside um, <coughs> string uh, parameter of uh, function x is exposed. Uh, just a quick check. When we uh, add uh, where close, uh, that is always true uh, to the uh, SQL subquery we hide inside uh, a string parameter of function x. Uh, application uh, returns uh, one row to us. Uh, but when we change uh, this close to always false, it returns uh, nothing. Uh, this means that our technique uh, works. Uh, to exploit <coughs> HQL uh, injection with Java constant met uh, method, you can use following SQL map command line. And uh, quick video quick video with java constants so please forgive us i know we all hungry but just this is this db2 example it's a very good database so again our application and this is our long url with uh, java constant so again this is true changing we can get false Copy it, and that's again true. Copy it in square map. Database here is DB2. Technique is blind. And here it is our custom injection point. Actually, that's all. We get banner. Banner is not interesting. Let's dump databases. Um, it's DB2. It has a lot of databases. <laughs> because it's default database installation. A lot of examples and other, other interesting materials. But the most interesting for us is uh, DB2 inst1. So this is our database. Uh, let's retrieve tables from this database and as usual db2 has a lot of tables but it's really interesting to see how a square map works in multi-threaded mode that's actually it's uh, rather quick Help somehow. Boom. Oh. Project. A lot of tables. It's exa DB2 example tables. Post. 
This is our post that is mapped to our application. And this is users. Uh, that's we're gonna dump in our final command. Okay. T users dump. And everything will uh, will be good, I know. Name. It's column name. Password. Admin. Thirty two. It's a uh, length of Password. Actually, it's password hash. Uh, the second row. The I Lenin, who who doesn't know who is Lenin, just ask me. Okay. Actually, that's almost it. Just a second. Okay. And some final words from Michael. Yes, and here is the final part of our presentation where we will summarize our techniques for exploitation. Uh, when you have found ORM injection, before exploiting it, you would probably want to know what uh, ORM library you uh, are uh, targeting. Uh, so you can use the following table. Uh, you just uh, paste payloads, different payloads into vulnerable uh, parameter and see what uh, payload uh, returns uh, a valid response from application. And here, this is actually the final slide because we gathered together all methods we preserved, uh, we presented in our presentation. And uh, this table shows which method works on each uh, ORM database combination. Uh, we hope this table will be useful for you because it, it contains uh, all, all words we have just said. And uh, we hope our findings will be useful for your future work. And if you have any questions, we will try to answer. Thank you for coming to our session. So we have uh, time for two questions, and then uh, lunch already started, and then we go to answer. So two questions. So uh, it's it's interesting how you how you figure out that you have an uh, o ORM uh, injection compared to an SQL injection. How how do, and how you detect them? Like uh, what was the idea? I know uh, <clears throat> the majority of Java applications now uh, use ORM libraries, so it is incorporated into G2E application server. So if you can see that you are facing. Uh, for example, JBoss or Wildfly, you know that uh, this application will probably uh, use ORM library. Or yeah, but how you know that you have an ORM injection? Like how you, how you detect, detect it in the beginning? Uh, you detect it as just uh, uh, SQL injection. So our... So it's Boolean stuff, you just like... Yes. It could be uh, error-based, uh, but it works. Exploitation method works the same. So it will be uh, faster than uh, error-based technique will work faster than blind technique. Or you can use the following table, just paste this. And to figure out how which ORM is used. Yes. And if it is SQL injection, you will uh, always uh, get invalid response from application because yeah, it. When you, uh, when you like initially find some Boolean stuff, it, it behaves like an SQL injection. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. One more, one last question from the audience. No? Guys, then I invite you all to uh, attend lunch downstairs. Thank you. Thank you.